Hello? Scott is unfortunately trapped somewhere in Dimension X, I assume. Ricky? Oh, hey Dylan, what's up? Hey Ricky, Scott is still missing somewhere, so could you fill in again for him this week? Uh, yeah, sure, what do you have in mind? I don't know actually, that's a good question. Maybe another Ninja Turtles video, that last one did pretty well. You know I have other interests outside of the turtles. Yeah, but we already did a Doctor Who video, so... <sighs> Alright, turtles it is. Well, that's weird. Scott? Hey Ricky, how's it going? How's the go- Weren't you in a hellish dimension for two weeks? Oh yeah, guess I was. Man, that place had terrible Wi-Fi. Luckily I was able to catch a ride back with a gross looking warlord who was stripped of his body and banished to Earth. Name was... Krong... or something. Krang? Wait! D did you see his original body? What did it look like? Spare no detail. I'll tell you, right after this bump. Krang, that evil talking brain, is a complicated character to discuss since there have been a few different versions of him. He's been in cartoons, the comics, and of course the latest live action Ninja Turtles movie which I still have not seen. He premiered and was most dominantly featured in the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon making his debut in episode 2 of season 1. Ricky, I'm sure you know more about the cartoon than I do so why don't you take over? Sure thing! You see, Krang and Shredder had an interesting dynamic where they really didn't care about each other or each other's plans. But I must have the parts to build my new thermal generator! Yeah, yeah, that's nice, Krang. Shredder was only using Krang for his technology, and Krang was only using Shredder, or at least at first, because he needed Shredder to build him a new body! <laughs> ah, with a new body, he could be a new man. But wait, hold on, what happened to the original one? Great setup question. You see, in the cartoons, Krang was a warlord from Dimension X who was banished to Earth. In the process, he lost his body and was left with the brain-like thing with tentacles for hands. He couldn't really accomplish much in that form, so he nagged Shredder until he finally built him a robot body that still creeps me out today. But this whole origin thing does raise an interesting question. If Krang needed a new body, what did his original body look like? The most telling piece of evidence comes from an episode in Season 7 entitled INVASION OF THE Krangazoids, Where Krang, who is fed up with the incompetence of Bebop and Rocksteady and Shredder's tunnel of vision of defeating the Turtles and Splinter, Krang turns to the person who is clever enough, fiendishly brilliant enough, and just all around good looking enough to carry out his evil plans. And that person is none other than himself. So he hops into a cloning machine that was just laying around and cloned himself six times creating a council of Krang. What do you think the collective noun for Krang is? Something poetic like a wrinkle of Krangs. Anyway, the Krang begin to change. They start developing hands and feet and before we know it they take on a reptilian form. Why does this happen? Well we get two pieces of information. Firstly, one of the clones says, Without sufficient data, I can only speculate that it has something to do with the cloning process. Not long after, Donatello proposes his own hypothesis. I don't get it. How come those clone clowns are growing bodies? Yeah, Krang doesn't have a body. Not now, but he used to have one. Oh yeah, that's right! It was taken away from him when he got booted out of Dimension X. Uh-huh, and the clones have that data in their DNA. So they're growing bodies the way some lizards can grow new tails. This has led several turtle fans to theorize that Krang's original body was some sort of giant bipedal reptilian creature, giant bipedal reptilian creature, giant bipedal reptilian creature was Krang's original body. Dimension X. Yeah, alright, that makes sense. The DNA blueprint for that was in the Krang copies, and something about the cloning process triggered their cells to start regenerating back into their original, much more menacing form. Case closed. Krang looked like a giant lizard before he was banished from Dimension X. Cue the end card. If you like these theories- Unfortunately, no. You see, a few seasons earlier, in the same cartoon series, we see a flashback of Krang's homeworld, and we actually meet some other members of his species. 
Oh, well, I assume they also looked like huge scaly creatures. Nope, they look exactly like the crane we're accustomed to. Brainy and a bubble walker and uh, one even with the mustache. Okay, what gives then? Shouldn't they look like the monsters the clones grew into? You would think, but there's still one more weird inconsistency. When Crane's rock soldiers show up, they do two things consecutively that kind of contradict each other. One, they immediately recognize Crane in his brainy, squishy form, and they follow that up with asking him what happened to his body. How can they recognize Krang without his body if they've never seen him without his body? These lizard creatures, which are implied to be Krang's original form, look far different than the mushy pink blob that stands before them. So how do they make the connection that the gelatinous form of Krang is the same as their fearless leader? What if we're going about this the wrong way? What if when Krang is referring to his body, he doesn't mean a body in the traditional sense, the way that you and I have bodies? We've been assuming that there's more to Krang's natural form than a wrinkly glob, but what if that's not the case? What if this is all there ever was to Krang's natural form, and the body he keeps referring to, the body he once had but lost when he was banished to Earth, is simply a robotic exosuit of some kind. Think about it, the robo-suits have clear glass fronts, meaning the rock soldiers would be able to recognize Krang's blob form both in and out of it. The only other members of Krang's species that we see have them, and nothing else, no other natural body that we know of, they just are that way. Like the Utrom. Sorry, the Hootrom? Okay, so David Wise, who developed the series and created the character of Krang, said in an interview that he looked to the comics for inspiration for the villain. He found it in issue three of the original run by Ninja Turtles creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird in the form of the Utrom. Uh, the inspiration was in the form of the Utrom. Eastman and Laird were presumably human. Now, the Utrom looked pretty much exactly like Krang. They even controlled android bodies like Krang does. The Utrom, however, don't look the way they do because they were stripped of their original bodies. No, 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 these are their original bodies. They are naturally squishy and small. In the comics, at least in the IDW run, Krang is unequivocally an Utrom. It's a part of his backstory as an Utrom prince. There's even a 2003 series which takes place in a completely different universe than the classic cartoon. I'm aware they crossed over before, you don't have to write it in the comments. But that universe's version of Krang makes a very brief cameo appearance as an Utrom. So in those universes of the Ninja Turtles, Krang's original body is the body that we see. He was never altered into a brain-like state, that's simply how he always was. Okay, this all sounds really great, but it doesn't really explain the Krangazoid clones. How come they mutated into lizard monsters? Doesn't this prove that their species definitely resembles reptilian beasts? Maybe, but maybe not. Okay, you're losing me, Scott. Okay, hear me out. You know how in Jurassic Park, they take dino DNA found in a fossilized mosquito, clone it, and make new baby dinos? Well, in real life, most likely the only DNA you'd get from that process if anything would be from the mosquito itself. However, paleontologist Jack Horner proposed that the simplest solution to building dinosaurs would instead be to genetically modify the dinos we already have, birds. In biology, there are these things called atavisms. Think of them like dormant genetic sequences, things in our genome that our animal ancestors used to have, but kind of got phased out through evolution. We still have the blueprints for them inside of us, but they never, or at least rarely ever, get activated. And when they do through a mutation, that's when you get things like dolphins with extra fins, whales with hind legs, that one's really weird to me, and in the case of the dinosaurs, chickens with alligator-like teeth. Ooh, Baxter Stockman actually talked about that in the Ninja Turtles sequel, talking about how Bebop and Roxay turn into a warthog and rhinoceros respectively. They just have that DNA buried into their genome, though they exaggerated it greatly. But hey, we are talking about a giant brain creature from another dimension, so I think we can suspend disbelief just a little bit. And it's through selective atavism activation that some, like Jack Horner, are hoping to further modify these toothy chickens to resemble their ancient dino ancestors, stimulate or repress certain sequences of genetic code found in birds until we have creatures with sharp teeth, long tails, claws instead of wings, and an inevitable friendship with Chris Pratt, all by manipulating genetic instructions that are already there. So what you're saying is the Kringzoids didn't grow back into their original bodies, but more so reverted back into what Krang's ancient ancestors may have looked like. 
Hey, like Donnie said, right? The clones have that genetic code in their DNA. The cloning process must have also been kind of a atavism activation, causing the clones to devolve. That would explain why the clones started freaking out when they started growing hands. They don't have hands in modern times. But their lizard ancestors did, and they must have retained the code for it in their genome. Good sir, I think we found the solution. I believe so. Crane has always looked like a chewed up piece of bubblegum with tentacle arms. That's what his species naturally is. Much like the Utron that he's based off of, even though it's never been explicitly stated in the cartoon that that is what he is. The body he lost when he was banished from Dimension X was not a natural body, but a mechanical one, like the bubble walkers we see other members of his species using. And the reason the clones grew into reptilian monsters is because the cloning process activated dormant genetic sequences carried over from their supposed lizard-like ancestors. Case closed. Huh. That was kind of anticlimactic. We just spent 10 minutes talking about how Krang looks like Krang. Yeah. Also, why are you titling this comic theory even though we talked about a cartoon the whole time? Uh, what did you guys think? Was Krang's original body of the large lizardy sort, or was it referring more to a robotic exosuit like that of the Utram from which he was inspired? Leave your thoughts in the comments or on our NerdSync subreddit, links in the description below. Ricky, thanks so much for being here teaching everyone about the Ninja Turtles. Where can people find more of you and your hat? You can find more of this hat and face over on youtube.com forward slash Stu Dippin. And you can find more of this voice talking about movies over on the Flash Fat Flicks Retro Movie Podcast. It can be found on iTunes and SoundCloud or wherever else RSS feeds go for their retro movie nights. Fantastic. Also, I just wanted to update you guys on my move to Texas. I'm finally actually moving next week. I know we've been talking about it forever, but it's really happening now. So we'll probably not have a video next Wednesday, but we will be at VidCon at the end of this month. So if you're also there or just in the area, come say hi. If you like these theory videos, we've got a whole playlist of them. Some of my favorites include this one about how Superman may have died before his famous fight with Doomsday, and this one about how Stan Lee may be playing a secret comic book character in all of his cameo appearances. You can click right there or the links in the description to go binge watch the whole playlist. And make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos we make for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that explore the history, science, art, and philosophy behind your favorite comic book superheroes. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.